Welcome back to the channel. Today we are recreating a million dollar Hershey's commercial for under $500. Look at that. Woo! How did it turn out? Okay, we, we can still save this. I'm here in Armando studio today and I am so freaking excited for this video that we have. Basically, we're recreating some dope shots from Steve Geralt, a visual engineer. He creates these very elaborate shots that are very complex, requires precision machines, robots that just, I mean, very difficult to do on your own, but we're gonna try and do this. We already did some on my channel. I'm so excited about that yeah, first shot that we got God. on day one. Now we're on day two, day one on my channel. It's gonna be really intricate. It's gonna be tough. Yes. I think we can do it. We're gonna do it. it All right, let's go. The million dollar shot we're recreating is from a Hershey's commercial that was live on Times Square. The finale of that commercial is this s'mores smash. All these pieces are floating, moving, and spinning, and then combined with a smooth camera parallax, they all come together in this perfectly gooey mess. The biggest challenge of this shoot will be all of the moving elements, and with that, the human error. The first thing we had to figure out was what gear we needed to help us pull off this shot that looks like it was originally made using at least three cinema robots. Yeah. So I have two slide pods because they go up and down. Okay. So I think we should hang one from a C-stand up above, I have like a clamp, so that way it could push down yeah. and then the other one pushing up. But I think there's a rotation, right? So that's what we were gonna use the Lazy Susan for. There's no mechanics involved, but right. we'll try it. Oh, and they even have an, oh my gosh. They both rotate. Yeah, but we weren't gonna do that. That's right, we said we weren't we're gonna rotate. We're simplifying it yeah. because it's just well, unnecessary. Yeah, well that's the thing about, so here's the thing, when you, when you do projects like this, there will be in certain areas where you have to cut corners. They're doing it because they're using a giant robot. We knew the slide pods had to be our foundation. They were gonna hold both of the graham crackers. Since we were attaching that top graham cracker to the slide pod, the first thing we got rid of was the top graham cracker spinning. It just wasn't possible because we were attaching the top slide pod then again to a C stand. So we have, no, we have one, two, three, four, five components. Before we started to build out our rig, we wanted to know who and what was going to hold each piece of the s'more. You'll be on one side and I'll be on the other side. Yeah. And then we literally have to hit go at the same time on the slide pods so they, they so that they do this. Yeah. And then we just kind of hold it and <laughs> hope, for the hope, best. hope for the best. And we have to heat them up first. Yeah, I know. With the torch. So somebody will have to heat it up, hit record while we hold it. <laughs> it's going to be a doozy. All right, let's just start building this thing. Okay. Just like in my last video, I want to give you a full rundown of the gear we used on this shoot. So here it is. Take a look. I'm not going to take a full minute to list these off because that would be boring. So just pause it. If you want, just pause it. Take a look. All right, back to the fun. I have a cheese plate. Ooh. And then we could just put the graham cracker on top of this. Okay. And then there you go. It took us about four hours from call time to get everything set up for our first attempt. That may sound like a lot of time and it kind of felt like it too, but that was the most labor intensive part of the entire process was figuring out how everything was going to work together. Then we just had to execute. What we're doing is we're using a light panel. It's a one by one, really soft light, but we want it even softer so that we can get rid of that shadow. So what we're doing is we're bouncing it off a, uh, what is that, a, like a bead board? Yeah. And then what we have over here is a full silent grid to just soften the light a bit. And I think in terms of the overall look, I would say it's I pretty it's spot pretty, on. pretty good match. The camera is moving in a bit of a parallax in their actual shot. That's complicating it way too much for us to pull off at this moment. So we're just gonna get a little bit of a tilt out of the tripod. And yeah, that lazy Susan spin, and we're just gonna get, we're just gonna try to match it up. We're gonna synchronize ourselves, and yeah. it's gonna work. <laughs> it, it is gonna work. It might take us 50 times, but it's gonna it work. We'll do it. We kept running into the same two problems. First, we'd spend probably 20 minutes making sure we had everything lined up perfectly, and then uh, this would happen. Uh, you're too fast, Connor. Whoa. Uh, you're way too far. Well, <laughs> how did I didn't do anything? <laughs> I think we're, I think everything's out of sync. 
This actually looks better than our first attempt because we brought it up and back down. The first take was not good. Everything was out of sync. Everything happened at the wrong time and it was not aligned. Although it's kind of aligned now, but we have so many moving parts. We have somebody, a person back there moving two pieces. We might need to change that. Yeah. And we absolutely did. We got rid of Jake who was standing behind the backdrop. So we attached the middle chocolate piece to a tripod and attached the top marshmallow to the top slide pod as well. So that would have the same motion as the top graham cracker. I hope that makes sense. But that change was essential to the success we saw after that. All right, go. So this now looks like it's over this way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We over-adjusted a little bit. This one's not as messy. But, um, the marshmallow, this one needs to move that way. The other issue I see is just that the chocolate wasn't melting. We started out using only the culinary torch, which is what we knew we needed to brown the marshmallows, but we quickly realized that we needed more time and we also needed another tool to get everything hot enough to get that melted effect we were going for. And we don't know if this will work. So <laughs> new idea is using a hair dryer to kind of warm up the marshmallow, kind of get it more, I guess, gooey. gooey. There's two marshmallows per attempt. They get covered in chocolate. So we have 11. 11 tries. 11 tries. Left. We got it. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of daunting. Yeah. It's a little scary. Because when we did the shoot, we did it like... I'm not even exaggerating, probably over a hundred times. At least that's, it felt like it. Yeah. Our second pretty obvious problem was that human error we expected from the very beginning. There was just that shake and inconsistency in the pieces that we as humans were holding. Can we watch these back? I, I, I get what you're saying, yeah, on the computer, if we okay. have a minute. Sure. Before we change everything. Yeah. I feel like we're really close. I understand human error, like, it's going to be a problem here. Yeah. But that's also, as we're saying, understandable. Because that's what we're working with, right? So I would rather have the chocolate floating and be closer to the shot that we're trying to replicate than to get it smoother and not have the shot that we're trying to replicate. Does that make sense? I mean, even this one's wobbly AF, dude. Yeah. We had to decide between putting both pieces of chocolate together on a stick and sacrificing both the floating and motion factors, or we could keep it as is with that tilted moving Hershey's piece, but accepting there was nothing we could do to eliminate that human error and shakiness. And ultimately, I'm glad we didn't settle for the easier shot because I really liked the result and we had to keep pushing forward. We couldn't change everything at that point. We were almost out of time. Another fun challenge was that the sly pots would disconnect at the most inopportune times. We'd be perfectly set and ready to roll on the shot and then they'd fail. It's almost like these tools weren't made to do the things that we're trying to do with them. So it added all the stress on top of the fact that we had to quickly and thoroughly heat all these food elements, but not too quickly, but not too slowly. It was basically super easy. Okay, we were oh, disconnected. Yeah. It's not drooping too bad. Yep. Okay, we, we can still save this. Yep. Right before you go down, get the bottom one up because the top one's starting to droop a lot more. Okay. Tell me when you start to see it. Drooping. It's going. It's All right, we gotta go. Go, right, go, 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 go. Go. Uh. Could that be it? That, that was, was pretty good. Someone just smash it. Someone smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Smash it. Dang it. Doesn't matter now. <laughs> that kind of does. So we've done six takes total, but it's been hours. ten hours. Yeah. Is that right? I think so. We just got a pretty good take. It's all lined up. It could be more smashed. Um, it could be more melty more gooey. It could be everything better, but it's our best one by far. We have 
two chocolate bars left to get this right. And we're gonna give it our best shot. I feel like we're close. We have two more bars. We have two bars. Oh god. <laughs> so. Oh god. But we are getting really, really close. We're getting really close. We thought we had two more bars, but turns out one chocolate piece in each of the packages was broken. So we actually only had one more attempt. Here's how that works. Right. Go, go. You call it go. out. Go. Well, top one's not coming down. Disconnected. God, disconnected. Tilt it up, tilt it up, tilt it up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they didn't meet. <laughs> yeah, disconnected right at the end. Shit. All right, whatever. Well, that's it. Well, you got a good one. That's it. That's all she wrote. This is the perfect example of things not always going according to plan on set. Oftentimes circumstances are entirely out of your control. You just have to work with what you've got. And honestly, that was actually the point of this entire video. So now, what you've been waiting for, here is the million dollar shot we recreated for under $500. I would honestly call that a win. There were so many X factors in this shot. We tried to make something that felt impossible to do. And I think at the end of the day, we achieved it to a degree. Let us know in the comments how you think we did. Grade us out of 100 and let us know what other shots you'd like us to attempt next. I think this experiment shows that with enough time, patience, and problem solving, you can create really cool content on a budget. I think with 10 or even maybe five more takes, we could have dialed in on this shot. The original, like I said, was made maybe with more than three cinema robots and over a million dollars of equipment. But if you wanna get started making this kind of work, go for it, just try it out. So thankful for Armando bringing me into his studio. This video would not have been possible without an incredible team and what a fun day working with them. I come out with videos every week, so if you like this one, make sure to subscribe. Now I already know you're ready to see more just like this one and you're in luck. You'll find the link in the description to Armando's channel where we again face off with Cinema Robots and the results are honestly wild. Make sure to go check it out. I'll see you in the next video.